Okay. That's better. Hmm. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's Bible study. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going to open with prayer before we dive into God's word. Shall we pray together? Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. Father, we two or more gathered that you are in the midst, Lord. We thank you, Father, that you are here this evening, Lord, and you're guiding us in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, as we unpack your word today, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, that it may plant a seed in our hearts, oh God. Mm -hmm. I see that grows, I see that has fallen on fertile soil, oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this time that we have with you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Mm -hmm. We glorify your holy name, Father, and we pray, Lord, that you may guide us, oh God, as we go through this Bible study tonight, Lord. Mm -hmm. That you may help us, oh God, to dissect your word, oh God, with wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen. 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 Yeah. Okay, so basically tonight, what we are going to be doing is we'll be reflecting on the message that we had from Pastor Bianca Mensik uh, on Sunday. So I'm just going to share my notes um, quickly here so that at least we like all follow through. Okay, so. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. So, um, her message was on wisdom, basically. So, she was emphasizing on how our 2020 is a significant year and how we should um, declare that, you know. So, she uh, encouraged us to have faith and hope in our hearts that we should plan and prepare for the year ahead because the journey that we are in needs wisdom. And she broke down what wisdom means. And just in a nutshell, um, wisdom causes you to be spiritually awake. It causes you to ask questions like, where am I going? How do I get there? What do I need to bring with me? And what do I need to leave behind? So here she also expressed um, that at times you need to leave things like unforgiveness behind, things like, you know, grudges, you know, all those negative vibes, you need to leave them behind in your 2020, the disappointments, you know, and then what you need to bring along with you is all the positivities now. Okay, and then she read, a, she read a beautiful scripture in Proverbs 4, verse 11. And it reads, I have shown you the way that makes sense. I have guided you along the right path. Okay, and it's a beautiful passage there. Your road won't be blocked and you won't be stumbled when you run. Hold firmly to my teaching and never let go. It will mean life to you. Okay. And then uh, she went on to break down the different categories of wisdom, how um, wisdom brings out a quality of experience. It is heaven's wisdom and it brings out good judgment. So that is in a nutshell. Um, I hope you have listened to the recording that was shared on the group. So I just um, decided to make a little summary, but obviously it goes deeper than this. So um, we can dive in and just discuss what this message means to us and how we plan to just let it take root in our hearts and in our lives. Okay, open for discussion. All right. Okay, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> So um, I, I might go a bit off from what Pastor Bianca said. So what I recognize about what was happening on that day, 
I, I discovered that, I discovered um, that um, what Pascal Bianca was sharing, sharing about was actually, about, actually what was also what on was also the the devotion, the devotion devotional, devotional five day devotion, five day devotion was shared, shared uh, uh, to us by Samuel Mata by Pastor Brian Austin, our global senior pastor. Senior pastor. And, and uh, he was yes, actually dealing, dealing directly with um, with the issue of, of um, he was he actually was dealing directly with. Uh, 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 with an issue of um, wisdom. So, so the first thing, first thing I learned in one, one of the devotions, of the uh, but I'm, I'm just going to stick to the one that I learned today because I remember more of what I learned today than what I learned yesterday. So I'm going to so share quickly uh, what I learned today. So if so you look if you at, look at uh, on, the on the devotion, devotion uh, are you able, are you to, able see? to see everyone? So if you, so look, if at you look at what's over what's there on over the devotion, there, um, um, the, wisdom the wisdom of obedience. Of obedience. It's like Pastor um, Bianca was also in line with what the Holy Ghost wanted to share, for her to share that on Sunday. I want to find out that the five-day devotional also was talking about wisdom. And this is what it says uh, about wisdom. And... Uh, the wisdom of the time. So one of the things that I wanted to look at actually was uh, the one verse that I'm highlighting now. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servants? Who walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Uh, that's in Isaiah uh, 50 verse 10 in King James Version, New King James Version. So I like the paraphrase there of that paragraph. It says that despite Samuel's plea, Samuel disobeyed God by overstepping his bounds. Consequently, Samuel advised Saul that obedience is more important than sacrifice. There was wisdom right there to Samuel for him to be able to differentiate between the two. That obedience was better than sacrifice. That's found in 1 Samuel 15 verse 22. So if we find wisdom, we are able to differentiate every situation. We are able to separate between the conditions that we face so that we are always in line with what God has planned for us and for what God has planned for our lives to be. At times what we want to do is not what God wants to do and then he continues to say sacrifice is saying no to yourself this is what Pastor Brian say when you sacrifice something you're saying no to yourself there are many people who are able to do perfect sacrifice they can even send up I remember it was Jesus who was saying even if you can offer your body to be bent and to be what what but if you do not know uh, the Son of God. You are just doing that in vain. I think it was Paul who was saying that. And sacrifice is saying no to yourself. And then obedience is saying yes to God. So when you obey, you are saying, yes, Lord. You know. So all I, I, I want to encourage us with is for us to, and to be people who are who are who are obedience first obedience must be the first thing it must be one of the first things we think of whenever we face whatever situation is that I have to be obedient to God it may not be easy obedience is doing without questioning without saying does it make sense or not if God said it to you and you are sure it's from God you do it without questioning it you know that's what obedience is all about you know, if God said something to you and then you do it without questioning, with, okay, God, uh, did you really say this? Because you just want to be obedient to God. Okay? So he continues to say that, I'm going to go back. Welcome, Lydia. Sacrifice is saying no to yourself. 
when you sacrifice, you are saying no to yourself. Obedience is saying yes to God. You know, I'm just excited about this. That, you know, I I, I don't know about you, me. I just want to say yes to God always. You know, I just want to say yes to God always. That's what it's all about. I remember uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So when you say yes to God, you are applying your faith because you are being obedient. And obedient is doing without uh, uh, questioning or reasoning. It may not make sense, but because you have faith that God said it, so you are saying yes. You know, think of Mary when the angel said, the Lord has blessed you, you're going to have a child. He said, yes, Lord, let it be as the Lord desires. You know, that's faith right there. He didn't know how God would look like inside him. He didn't know how he was going to get pregnant without having been with a man. So obedience is saying yes to God, you know. So the thing is we can make sacrifice without God being involved at all. <laughs> it is so true, yes. And uh, I, I'm thinking about myself that, you know, I don't know how often times that I would make sacrifice, you know, and, you know, and usually the sacrifice you make are very comfortable. You know, it's something that you can live without. You just, you know, at times we are as, um, was it Abel and Cain who offered a, a pleasing sacrifice between the two brothers? Who offered the, the best sacrifice? Who can remind me? Was it Cain? Or was it Abel? I don't remember. But one of the brothers, he offered what he was willing to give. Not what God expected. God expected 10%. But he offered what he could give. What he was willing. So he was sacrificing. He was not being obedient to God in every day. So the thing, <laughs> at times we can sacrifice without being involved at all. You know without God being part of our sacrifice. That's not to say that sacrifice is wrong, but rather the obedience is better. God is looking for your obedience. You know. So, yeah. I don't know what others would say. God is looking for obedience. Okay, sorry, am I audible now? Perfect. So I was just saying this is exactly in line with um, what Pastor Bianca was sharing on Sunday. Like you said, you know, um, just amazing how Pastor Brian also was sharing on, on wisdom and, you know, what you emphasize also, how important it is. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So, so it's, it's not about, about what we are willing to sacrifice at the end of the day. You know, it is about obey, obeying God. So, you know, that is so profound in a sense that we sometimes get caught up in what we are willing to give up and we forget that, you know, the main factor, the main important thing is just caring exactly what God wants from us. Because the principle is the same, you know, if you want to help someone, for example, it's, um, you know, they are more likely to appreciate what you do for them if it is what they want or what they need or what you're meeting their need per se, as opposed to you just doing it, you know, you think that they need this, but actually they don't. So it's pretty much the same with God as well. You think that, you know, God needs you to sacrifice this. Well, sacrifice is good. Like, like you're saying, saying but, but obeying, obeying God, God is even better and it is, you know, the best way to go about it. So, so by obeying God, God you're fearing the Lord and that is the beginning of wisdom. So, so encouraging us further to just, you know, adapt to that principle of just being obedient to God and, you know, 
even though we're saying that you know sacrifice is good and all of that but do not put sacrifice above obedience because obedience is better than sacrifice so that's what i take from the message yeah we are still on the uh, reflecting on the message uh, by pastor bianca sunday so just updating everyone who just joined us now that um this is what pastor bianca talked about um he talked about wisdom so um i was sharing on how how these two messages were just connecting the one i was reading in my devotion uh pastor brian was just 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 did a five-day devotional uh daily devotional reading and it's been talking and about wisdom talking about from day one i started on monday one. and it's tuesday it's talking about wisdom still so it, it, it's just amazing when i hear what god is doing in this season you know looking listening to this devotion i'm like wow you know pastor Bianca was talking about wisdom and then pastor brian also talks about wisdom i'm like whoa maybe it's the season for wisdom you know, and I remember on day one, uh, we were reading on Proverbs 4. Uh, maybe we can all go there in Proverbs 4. Uh, day one of devotion, we read on Proverbs, Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Uh, I'm not sure the verse, I think it's verse 7, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm just going to read it out loud. All right, listen, listen to what it says. Do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and shun evil so there's the highlighted verse for for the de daily devotion the first uh, day one on monday which do not be wise in your own understanding in your own eyes fear the lord and shun evil so that was one of the highlights and i had to read the whole thing so as you read the whole thing you listen to so much wisdom you know and when you think about it Wisdom is key to everything. You know, if you have wisdom, you have everything. I think it's it's somewhere also on this chapter where it says that um, uh, get wisdom, get uh, get wisdom, and get understanding. You know, okay, is verse thirteen? Uh, let's read together verse thirteen. Proverbs four verse thirteen. Can we all go there? Proverbs, Proverbs 4, 4 verse uh, 13. All right, are you all there? Uh, okay. Can somebody maybe share whatever he has found and just read for us, please? Okay, so I'm reading in CEV version. Okay. Um, Proverbs 4, verse 13. Yes, yeah. Hold family. I'm loving the NIV version. It says that um, uh, verse 13, blessed. So I'm so sorry, guys. I'm reading the wrong chapter. It's chapter 3, what I'm reading here. It was not the one that was shared, actually. It's chapter 3 I'm reading. Uh, I'm going to go back and correct that. Maybe God wants us to speak about chapter 3. So um, I made a mistake of reading verse 7 of chapter 3. And uh, I'm also reading verse 13 of chapter 3. It says that, Proverbs 3, verse 13, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. You know, that's what God says in His Word, that you are blessed when you find wisdom. Okay, so can I read the right, cha the right chapter and the right verse? Because I made a mistake. Hurry, guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Chapter 4, verse 7, I'm reading. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Wow. <laughs> the beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. You know, the second part, the second sentence of this, of this verse just hit me hard. It's going to cost us. It's going to cost us everything. 
you know, but we must get understanding. Because it's easy to go about not understanding. You know, it's less work, it's less of a hassle, you know, uh, it's easy, you know, it, you get along, you know. But the reality, the Bible doesn't make things easy for us. This is where things get real, you know, because it's easy everything to just be miracles, miracles, you know. But the reality, this is what God, He wants us to, there's, there's an action that has to be applied to get it. Because if you listen to it clearly, just the first sentence, it says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Action, get. It's a verb. It's something you do. Get. You know? Get wisdom. Wow. And then the second sentence says, though it, though it cost all you have, get understanding. Understand it. All right. I'm just going to end it there, guys. We are still on Pastor Bianca. Whatever you heard and you feel that God touched you on Sunday when you had the message, uh, please go through, uh, share. I remember one of the things I heard on Sunday was wisdom of the time, that we have to be wise. You know, we have to be wise. We have to plan. We had to all those things you know one of the greatest things that I learned a long time ago about wisdom was the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom that's one of the things I learned that I would like to consult God and I'm not doing well on that part to consult God on everything I do but I would love to consult God first because that's what the Bible says it's the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom Wonderful. Um, Lydia, would you like to share something? Lydia? She's muted. Tell her to mute herself. All right. No, that's okay. Whenever you're ready, Lydia. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Uh, what's your reflection on the message, Lydia? Okay, I think something is wrong with the audio. We can't hear. She's speaking, She's speaking but it's, it's a bit low. Um, Hello? Hello? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. we can hear you. <laughs> but speak a bit louder. <laughs> Hello. Yes. 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 Loud and clear. Okay, I'm saying I just joined in, so I'm just still trying to understand what you guys are discussing. I'm still just leaning in. I just tuned in now. Oh, okay. 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 So, so I'm um, just to recap for you, Vivia. Basically. We are reflecting on the message that we had on Sunday from Pastor Mensik. So um, it's about you know, wisdom and how you're going to tackle your 2020 and how your 2020 is a significant year. So you was just now just emphasizing on wisdom and how to attain it. And I was just about to ask the question like, okay, we get that, you know, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, you know, but then how do you attain wisdom or how do you, how does it manifest, you know, how do you fear the Lord? What is it that, is it something you do or is it something you feel? What does it mean for you? I mean, in a Bible study, these are the sort of teachings that we, you know, just wrap our minds around to guide each other. So what are your thoughts on that? in terms of if you had to um, teach someone, for example, how to attain this wisdom that we speak of, this heavenly wisdom, you know, if you were to, you know, show the fear of the Lord, how do you go about that? What is it that you do? Or is it something that you just feel? Or what does it mean for you, basically, to fear the Lord? Okay, so basically, what I'm Basically, I think it's something you have. It's like there's no better place than the Bible. 
which I think if you if we read more and lean into it more spiritually, then we'll mm -hmm. understand everything that God is trying to say to us. I think it's all in the Bible. We just need to reflect and be uh, more spirit-led when it comes to our understanding of the Word. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then I think that's how we get wisdom. Wonderful. I, I completely agree. I mean, um, where else to learn about the things of God than from God himself, right? <laughs> so, and I also like um, what you emphasized earlier as well, wherein, you know, although he's, he says he's not there yet in terms of consulting God in everything that he does, but just that on its own, that is also another way in which you can show the fear of the Lord that in whatever you do, you put him first. You know, no matter how small it may seem, say you have an interview or, you know, you're about to eat a meal, whatever it may be, then you invite God, you put him first in whatever situation. You have a decision to make, you put God first. So by doing so, you're showing God that, you know, that situation uh, requires him, it requires his presence, and you value him and you you value um, what he does as well. You fear him, basically, because you realize or recognize rather that without God, you know, you will not conquer in that particular um, situation or particular endeavor that you're going through. So that is also another way in which you can show your fear of the Lord or practice the fear of the Lord by involving him in everything that you do. And um, I'm glad that we are at least honest with ourselves and recognizing that it does not always come as easy because sometimes we just want to do things on our own, you know, and basically just recognizing that we do need God. That is the first step. And we can learn into allowing him to be God by just inviting him in every situation that um, we take on. Just put him first and strive to be, you know, better children of God by so doing. Okay. You know, one of, one of the things that uh, I learned um, was that um, when you have wisdom, um, you don't, it doesn't just fall on you, like poof, you suddenly have wisdom. But wisdom is practical. So wisdom needs you to, to be intentional about it. You know, what Pastor Bianca was trying to show us is that there are practical ways to get wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the same thing, get wisdom, get wisdom, you know, because uh, it's easy to be naive and think that um, um, I'm just going to poof and have wisdom, you know. Life would throw challenges that would require you to apply wisdom. Life will throw, like it's, it's wisdom on its own to learn that when you are faced with a challenge that you as a human being cannot solve, but it's, it, it's so impossible in your eyes. It's wisdom on its own when you remember that your God is greater than your mountain. And then you use wisdom by just kneeling and praying to God. You use wisdom by just confessing the desired results that you expect, not the ones that you are presented with. So when you face circumstances and challenges and you apply wisdom, you know, you are literally wise. You become wiser as you learn, oh, I had a bad dream, I need to start praying. Oh, my day doesn't go well if I, start, I don't start by praying. Oh, I need to start praying for that. So that's wisdom on its own, you know. Wisdom goes all the way. It's everywhere. It's everywhere in how we think, in how we respond to situations that we might have shouted on, we might have reacted in the wrong way. That's wisdom, you know. So it, it's broad, you know, like I was reading earlier about uh, one of the devotion today was talking about wisdom of obedience. And then they made an example of Saul 
when he was advised by a very wise man, a prophet, Prophet Samuel, advising Saul. He was saying to Saul, sacrifice, we are saying obedience is better than sacrifice. And then, and then now, I, I like what Pastor Brian says in his devotion, that he explains that sacrifice is saying no to yourself. You are saying no to yourself when you sacrifice something. But obedience is saying yes to God. You know, how awesome is that when we get to say yes to God, yes, you know, yes, Lord, because that's what God wants to hear from us when he calls us. He wants to hear us saying, yes, Lord, because we accepted him to be our Lord and Savior. So a person who is Lord, he is a king above you. You ought to listen. You ought to obey without asking questions. Amen. <laughs> All right, I'll leave it at that, guys. <laughs> sure, thank you so much for that. Um, Lydia? Yes. I'm going to allow you to share your mind. <laughs> yes. I'm getting a bit disturbed. I didn't keep preparing for school. Oh. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think um, there's nothing we can do or achieve without wisdom. We, we need wisdom. We need to always consult with the Lord that this, this is what I'm going into. What is the thing that I must do or where are you guiding me, Lord? So, yeah, it's something I'm learning. And so far, yeah, I think I'm in the right direction. It's working. And I, I'm, I'm, I was usually not one to actually talk to God before I do something, only after I've done it. So now I'm learning to talk to God first so that he can teach me and guide me the right way. So I think, yeah, I'm having a great start so far because of that wisdom message. Yeah, actually did the devotional way before last service, so yeah, I'm 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 understanding yeah. how important it is to get wisdom first. Yeah. You know, it's it's so funny that um you mentioned that uh at times we we you know ask for God's counsel only after we have made a decision. It's more like you, you conclude and then you're like letting God know this is what you're doing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Saying that just like for me, it's like, wow, it's so funny how common this is because I think most of us also go through this, you know, as well, wherein you make decisions without even involving God on, only after you've made a conclusion. Then you're like, um, God, please bless my plans. You know, only then you like just letting God know basically what you've decided. And that is not the way to go, you know. So at least now our eyes are open to realize that, you know, we can always change things around and do it the right way. That in everything, we put him first, which means before you even think of deciding, you know, before you even think of going into that situation or whatever it may be, you invite him first and get counsel from him. So perhaps uh, the most challenging question will be uh, while getting counsel from God, um, how do you know that for sure this is from God and not just your own, you know, desires or whatever it may be? You know, it's, it's not your own mind per se. How do you know that this is particularly from God? You know? For some, you might say if it's in line with the word of God, then it's definitely from God. I don't know what your take would be on that. Like if you had to um, teach each other, yeah, how do you know, show that, you know, this is God's counsel. This is um, God saying, yeah, go about the situation this way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 
maybe maybe you, you might want to share um how do you receive counsel from god like how's the experience for you when you are consulting god about a particular situation how how do you get that answer from god and how do you know for sure in your heart that this is what god says and you know you run with it how is it for you or well, in my case definitely i i i communicate more and in worship i'm a very musical person so before i can pray i have if it means i must play one song on repeat for one hour until i'm in that space then that's what i do because i need to be in the space i need to feel that i'm in the presence then once i can feel that i'm in the presence then yeah and I lean in and I, I talk what was on my mind. And yeah, in that quiet time, I get my verification. The yeses or the noes or the maybes or the not nows. Yeah, that's how, normally that's just how I do it. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Lydia. Um, Blue? Yeah, I'm 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 taking a recap here on, on, on in Pastor Brian's uh, as message, uh, but I caught what you said. How do I do it? Uh, where I'm at now, I, I just surrender. Uh, where where I'm at spiritually now, I'm I'm in a state of surrender. You know, I surrender everything, you know, and uh, I've made peace with the reality that I'm in his hands, I'm in his hands, and he's got the world, he's got the whole world in his hands, and I can only do what he tells me to do. And at times I go off track, but I try my best to do what he tells me to do. So how do I handle it? Uh, I'm not a person who says at this time I'm praying. But whenever time comes for prayer, I pray. Whether I'm alone or whether there's someone around. At times I scare versatile. I'm sure she can attest to that as well. That I yeah, scare her at times that. with my praying pray. loud. <laughs> I'll just say, yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. You know, and out of nowhere. So that's the journey that uh, I'm going through currently. Um, I don't have a set schedule. Because at this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with God. You know, it, it, anytime, anytime I can talk to God, anytime. You know, uh, in my dream, I can talk to God. And uh, I've discovered lately, since... I discovered that when I'm in my dream, the devil can attack me because I discovered another system in my brain. It's like it clicked to me that in my dream, I can do anything. I'm a superman. So I fly in my dream. I do everything in my dream. <laughs> so the devil doesn't attack me in my dreams anymore because it's just a waste of time because my faith is like super powerful in, in my dreams. So I pray, I pray more uh, openly like talking, just like I'm talking. At times when I'm worshiping, I just pray. But the best moments of my time for prayer uh, is when I'm jogging. That's why I pray more often. When I'm shaking out my body, then I pray and I pray, you know. And yeah, that's how I apply wisdom, I would say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's it's so interesting how, you know, diverse we all are and how we individually have, you know, our own ways in which we interpret, um, you know, how God speaks to us, you know, like for Blue, it's through dreams and all of that. And for Lydia, you know, it's, you know, through worship, that's where you, you feel more connected to God. And that's where you feel more affirmed uh, of whatever decision you're trying to make. And, you know, it, it's different for different people. For some, it's, you know, just reading the word of God. And if, you know, God drops something in your heart that is just in line with what you've been praying about, 
and that for you is like affirmation it's a yes or no or maybe or not nows so it's amazing how you know god does not stick to one way of doing things and how he keeps on teaching us and i'm so glad that we get to start the year with you know um, teachings on wisdom as well because i mean we really need that moving forward in our 2020 you know and it's amazing that both pastor brian and bianca mensik were just like in sync you know about this message and it is so relevant for us as well that you know we need wisdom you know like uh, pastor bianca was saying on sunday that we need wisdom to prepare and plan for the year ahead because 2020 is definitely going to be a significant year, you know, so we need to just emphasize on that as well and believe it in our hearts as well moving forward. And I like that we get to reflect back on this message as well, because it's important for us to understand what this wisdom means. How do you get this wisdom, you know, and how, like, what does it mean in our lives, basically? And like we discussed earlier, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. How do you fear the Lord, you know? all of those things. So hearing different perspectives from, you know, all of you as well, you know, gets to also teach me as well. Like if maybe I was, you know, lacking in a certain area as well, then I get to see like, oh, okay, this is how Lydia does it. Maybe let me try this way. Oh, that's how Blue does it. Let me try it that way. Because that's how amazing God is. He's diverse in that way. And the way in which Lydia is able to hear the voice of God could be slightly different from how blue hears it as well and that is the beauty of it you know so um Moipi Mang, welcome we see you um also joined us so i tried to do a little recap for you so you can also um get the hang of what we've been discussing about so um maybe so you also don't feel left out maybe you can also share um your part as well as to how do you hear um, or how do you get affirmation from, from God uh, towards something that you've been praying about? Like, for sure, this is from God, you know. How do you attain wisdom, basically? Oh, no, you are mute. Can, can you please press on mute? <laughs> we can't hear you. Oh. Can you there hear me now? Awesome. We can <laughs> hear you now. Okay. Hi everyone. Um, Hello. for me it's it's through prayer and praise and worship. You know, um I know that God affirms whatever I've been praying for when I get that peace from worshiping and praising him. Uh, because most of the time I will be uh, praying from a point of knowing you know, that he said it will be done for me. So, yeah, when, when, I, when I praise him, when I, I thank him, I know it's his affirmation that it is done for me. Okay. Wow, I've got, some, I've got something I wanted to share. Welcome, uh, Mumpima, and your thank friend. You. What's your friend's name? Deboho. <laughs> Debo, welcome, Debo. You're welcome. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Okay. Um, I just wanted to share something quickly. Uh, are you able to see it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read quickly, guys. I'm sorry to make you read. Believe it or not, this is Pastor Brian's devotion, Wisdom Makes a Way. It's just so in in connect, in link, in sync with uh, Pastor Bianca's message on Sunday. This was Monday uh, reading that I was reading, so I just went back to it. Believe it or not, the Bible has great deal to say about wisdom. Do you realize wisdom has a real voice that is calling out to you? Do you realize that? I do. <laughs> Instead of wearing yourself out in pursuit of success, if you understand the power of prioritizing wisdom, you will be empowered to see your way through a successful and fulfilling life. Rather than trying to get rich, get wisdom. Mind you, this is a practical thing to do. Wisdom doesn't just drop on you. Hey, I've got wisdom. It's practical. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, it, you have to apply, you have to practice. Mm, true. Okay. 
the wisest and the richest men in history said it this way. Proverbs 23 verse 4. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. Are you wise enough to know when to quit? If it's not working? <laughs> All right. I'm in business. I'm thinking about this now. All right. God desires to bless you. It's not a question of that. God can do so much to build your life, but you can tear it down through a lack of wisdom. Even though God is able to restore what has been stolen and lost to you or lost to you without wisdom, whatever you may gain will be torn down. You may win lottery today and tomorrow you will finish all the money and still be poor and broke. You know, Proverbs 14 verse 1, a wise woman builds her house. Ish, my God. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. I don't know, have you ever been in the house where when the woman is not happy and then you can't even feel comfortable? You know, I'm talking to women here, I'm not sure, but me as a guy, I've, been, I've visited a house uh, of a Ruti, you know, and of a house of somebody that I, I love as a brother. But the house was so sour because the woman was toy was tearing it down. <laughs> so, so the Bible talks about wise women, you know. So we have a choice to use wisdom, you know. And I continue to say, while there is nothing inherently wrong with wanting to get ahead in life, the key is to make sure you have a correct priorities. First things first. Otherwise, life has a way of unraveling. For all the effort you have, you may be spending trying to get what you want or need. The answer is to change your focus and get wisdom. This wisdom means a paradigm shift, a fundamental change of thinking and way. Proverbs 12, Proverbs 12 verse 1. <laughs> be changed by renewal of your mind. Do not conform to the standard setting of this world. The beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. Mm -hmm. And someone gave this advice to Saul, who was, who was a man who believed in sacrifice. So Samuel said to a very wise man, said to, to Saul, obedience is better than sacrifice. And then I love what Pastor Brian says in his devotion, ex defining these two words. What does it mean? Sacrifice is saying no to yourself. But True. obedience is saying, yes, Lord. You know, mm. it means it pleases God. When we obey God, he's pleased. He keeps blessing us. He doesn't take us out of the throne just like Saul. He keeps blessing us. Because without faith, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in other words, obedience, it's, an, it's a practical action that you do to show that you are obedient to God. As a result, it becomes faith and it pleases God. I'm going to end there, guys. I'm getting all piped up with this. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Wonderfully shared. Thank you so much. And I believe that we've all, you know, grabbed a piece of something in this Bible study. And we're going to, you know, run with this, um, you know, chasing after wisdom instead of riches and allow our minds to be renewed as well, you know, and, and we're just going to lean in. And thank you all for sharing your, you know, your stories on, on how, you know, you interact with God how you get affirmation in terms of, you know, how you get counsel and, and wisdom from God, because that is important for us to, you know, teach each other as, as you know, children of God as well. And um, unless somebody has, you know, anything else to add, then we can just pray together in closing. I wanted to ask something. We still no, have time. I wanted to ask about the scripture that you said about Paul of sacrifice and wisdom. Which scripture? Sorry, um, the, the scripture about? Like where? Paul's sacrifice and wisdom. Is. Which one? 
Which oh, oh, scripture oh. is that? Oh, you are asking about uh, that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, sorry, yeah. <laughs> okay, it wasn't Paul, it was Samuel. Okay. It, it, oh. was, it was Samuel. It's, it was Samuel. Yeah, it's Samuel who teaches. Yeah, who teaches us. Yeah, uh, who teaches us. Mm -hmm. that. Okay, yeah. and uh, it's you will find it over here. I've already shared it on your chats. Yeah. Are you able to see your chat? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, just go on. Go on the chat. Here on Zoom, the option called chat. You just look there, chat something. Oh, we'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll also share it on WhatsApp. Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right, maybe All right, if maybe we have anything we want to share, maybe um, that you recall on what you learned on Sunday, or maybe something during the week that you would like to testify about before we go into prayer, because we close at uh, 9. Okay, um, I would like to, to just say something about, I, I actually didn't know the meaning of wisdom and i got so excited when uh, pastor bianca was defining what wisdom is she said mm. it's it's a um, quality of experience mm. so in 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 our walk and and journey as a christian because it, it's a way of life mm. so the the quality of experience that we gain from trusting god from obeying you know, uh, mm. what we need to obey from the word. Mm. It, it's what gives us wisdom. Yes. Like, for example, there are so many things, like the beginning of the year uh, now, where most people will be having goals and and um, plan what they want to achieve in 2020. And, you know, the year is long. So the quality of experience that God has been good to you, God has been faithful to you, that that is wisdom that you are gaining as you journey in this life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh wow, that's so powerful. Uh, like um, you remind me that um, the fact that you are still a believer—that's wisdom right there. That the devil didn't mm -hmm. lie to you, like he did in yeah. the garden mm -hmm. with Eve that you are still within the grace of God. That's wisdom right there, you know. So mm -hmm. wisdom wisdom can be defined in many things, you know, and yeah. You know, and at times I believe the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Uh, that decision that you make based, they call it the gut. You know, I call it the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. he, he's the one who says this is the right thing to do. That's wisdom right there, because mind yeah. you, he is our counselor. He is our counselor. And mind you, the Holy Spirit is God. He's full God, just like the Father and Jesus. So he is wise. He's only science. That's God. He's, he is he's all-knowing. You know, so get wisdom. You know, get wisdom. It has a lot, it has a lot to do with practical ways has a lot to do with a relationship with the one who knows all things. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And has a lot to do with reading his word as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Uh, Lida, do you want to wanna share something before we all pray together? All right. Let us pray. Um, anyone with prayer items that would like us to pray for? We we'll pray together. Definitely praying for wisdom. <laughs> yes. I vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, comrade, we are praying for wisdom. <laughs> um, I need wisdom. <laughs> All right, uh, beloved, let's pray. I need wisdom. And raise your hands. Job, Okay, to get a job. All right. We're praying for that. We're praying for that. Let's pray. Let's all raise hands. Whatever you want to do, just do. Father God, we thank you. You are all powerful. Father, we thank you for this. 
wisdom for our new jobs, wisdom for our new businesses, wisdom for our families, wisdom for our relationships, wisdom for our marriage, wisdom for our finances, wisdom for our business, wisdom for our life, wisdom for our life, wisdom for our hey God, we thank you for for best to be fighting, Father God. We ask you to come in full force and guide us, cancel us in the name of Jesus. Today, God, we come against any that would try and help us. We are not going to fall in any strength. We are escaping all the snares that have been in our path. In the name of Jesus, we come in the fullness of wisdom of God. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God. And Lord God, we are wise with our willing. We are wise with our salary. We are wise with our purpose. We are wise with our bodies. We are wise with our food. We are wise with our reading. We are wise with our walks. We are wise with the Father. Let us know how to be so vulnerable. Let us bring the soul all the people. Let us be everyone in Chicago. Let us be slow over everything. Father, we are faithful. Because we fear the Lord God Almighty, we are God, we are sick. It may cost us all the effort. We receive it, it is our portion. Lord, we thank you that tonight we are dangerous. Lay goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall be us all the days of our life, and we shall wear it now. Of the Lord forever and ever. No weapon of the days I shall prosper. No, we are. We are children of God. We are not the king, but we are the herd. We are not the outcast, but we are the king. Father, we pray for wisdom for our economy. Father, we pray for those who have set in leadership for God to rule this country. And God, we pray for those who have set to make our vow. We pray for wisdom for our children as they start their school year. We pray for wisdom for our kids, Father God, as they go out into the world, wherever the stage is going to be in God. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are united for the children with the people of Shadim. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you glory, we give you glory, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, Father, Lord, bless your holy name, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Amen. Can you close all our Okay. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us today, mighty God. We thank you for your faithfulness, King of mm-hmm. Kings. We thank you for loving us, Jehovah. We know, Heavenly Father, that it's not by might, it's not by power, Mm -hmm. but it's Mm -hmm. by your spirit Mm -hmm. in our lives. It's by mercy, mighty God. It is by your undeserved kindness, Jehovah God. We thank you for this wonderful day, and we are looking forward, Father God, for a new day for you, said Heavenly Father, that a new day brings new blessings. Our hearts are are receptive, mighty God. Our hearts are, are, are expectant, mighty to God for a new thing yes, in your life. For we serve a miraculous God. We serve mm-hmm. the Lord who is, who was, and who mm-hmm. is to come. Father God, we thank you and we know mm-hmm. that you have won each and every battle that we will be facing mm-hmm. tomorrow, mighty God. Yes, we thank Lord. you, King of Kings, that you have opened yes, those yes, of opportunities Jesus. for us, Jehovah God. We thank you, mighty God, for your yes, faithfulness yes, yes, yes. Oh, as every step of the way, Jehovah God. Yes, we thank you for each and every family represented 
hand to tear my yes, that Jesus. you are touching us right now. We pray, Father God, for the spirit of praise. Have your way, Jehovah, in our lives. We only need you, Jehovah God, our spirit. We will only bless you and honor you and adore you, Father God, for you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are glorious. We thank you and we pray all this in the wonderful, precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> Good night, Good night, everybody, and thank you. We'll see each other on Thursday, same time, eight to nine. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs>